Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Southern Outdoorsman Podcast. Coming at you from Studio West over here. A uh, little video podcast action going. We've actually been filming all morning uh, some videos that are going to be out today. We're going to talk a little bit about those. Uh, but we got some special guests in the house today. We, of course, have the ginger bow hunter over here. Mr. Jacob Myers. <sighs> doing well. I'm doing real well, Andrew. I didn't uh, ask you how you're doing. Yeah, you didn't I'm, 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 ju- I'm, jumping, I'm jumping to conclusions because typically he, he... Listen, typically he waits... If we had people over here... I'm, I get introduced about eight minutes into the podcast. Yeah. So people, I try to skip over People it. on the video podcast are like, Take him down well, what's wrong with Jacob? Oh, and like, the audio people are like, is Jacob even here today? <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm already saying, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. We got to listen to some turkeys. So I'm jumping to conclusions. Got to listen to some turkeys. Yeah, but we, Andrew, Andrew Garhold, me and Greg, and sent us to like... No, listen. I only heard one. Listen. But, but hey. It was the right one, wasn't yeah, it? See, yeah, I, that I, turkey... He stayed in that one spot. All right, all right, look, we're about to talk about this. We got Greg Mayhair from Meadow Creek Mounts. Did I say your last name right? You did. Okay, dude. See, our, our whole friend group, they all say a different thing for your yeah, last name. They're all like, right. Greg Marr, Greg, Mo, like, whatever. I, said, I don't even know what Jacob says. I, I Mayhair now, but I, I, I told him earlier, I was like, oh, I have called him I only him know it because I edited Marr. the podcast y'all did up in North Alabama, and okay. you said it on there. I'm like, God, okay. Now there I you go. Smart. And then we got the legendary Mr. David Ellis. Uh-oh. Y'all, y'all. I hear you, legendary. <laughs> Famous for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> hey, can we get a gobble real quick? There you go. Golly. Yeah. But I don't ever say Greg's nice. Greg, Greg Metacreek. He just says, yeah. Yeah. He says Greg. <laughs> That's his last name. Greg Metacreek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Greg, you came down here to film that, uh, that video with us. We filmed a video on how to quickly side in your turkey gun without having to shoot a whole bunch of shells. Uh, that's going to be out today on the YouTube channel, the same day that this drops. Sweet. Um, so y'all be sure to go check that out. That was fun. And, uh, and yeah, you got to go listen for turkeys with us this morning. Uh, y- y'all were talking last night about uh, wanting to go listen on some areas. I was like, I could use some bodies <laughs> if, uh, if yeah. you boys want to come on out. <laughs> but see, you know, I was hoping to find something on some public land I could come back and hunt. Well, but... hey, look, if you find yourself passing back through here, All right. let's get up and go. Let's oh, okay. See, I was wondering if he was going to let you get some of his privilege. So, I'm going to take Chris Leppert and you. I'm not going to take Jacob. All right. To the so. private land. Yeah, private yeah, land. Privilege. That's where we're at, the hunt club. I got that's, that's his. Well, that's what I, was talking. I didn't know if he was talking about the public land. Oh, take no. him to the public land. No, no, oh. he's gonna take him to the private land. Take I him to my best guard. The privileged birds. I'll yeah. be out there with all the pores on public. Yes, <laughs> I go with you, Jacob. Yeah, yeah, me and Dave. I go with you. Yeah, we'll, gobble, we'll, we'll go gobble one up. Go. Crawl. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna drop pins everywhere. <laughs> they gobbling everywhere. <laughs> I'm just dropping pins for the internet. Hey, hey, you ain't hunting with me. If you putting on the internet. <laughs> uh, What'd right. you say earlier? You're gonna drop a bunch of pins on a no hunting zone and send them to your buddies. <laughs> Like, man, I had to leave early, but, it, you know, I, 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 I left him gobbling. That game where it comes up, you hear, you know, I got the door, you're like, uh, yes, sir. Like, hey, I heard you're on the no hunt zone. Yeah. Nah, dude, I was just, I was messing around on that one. I was just yeah. sending, sending pins to buddies. Man, how many birds you heard, man? I heard about 10. Really? <laughs> oh, where at? I was like, well, it's a no hunting zone, but, you know. <laughs> I still heard them. <laughs> them, them, old, them old boys in Mississippi go slip on over there. Yeah, well, I, I can't hunt. I don't hunt them no hunting zones anyway. Ours, I'll say no, no trespassing. You don't anymore. Huh? I said you don't anymore. Yeah, I don't know. I, I couldn't read for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> he thought I said go, huh? Yeah, I was like, yeah. <laughs> I, was like I, said, I was dyslexic, you know. I was switching, I was switching letters around and everything. Yeah, I don't know why they keep telling me it's posted. I mean, I know it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would never cross the line. But, you know, for where I come from now, you know, we don't condone any illegal activity. But if you can, if it, the barbed wire ain't but two strands, I mean, that really ain't holding. <laughs> if it can't hold a cow back, I mean, how are you supposed to hold somebody else back? <laughs> you know, no, no, no. But you know, uh, that's why we look. If you can just kind of step over it, hey, you know when Andrew's laughing hard, look at look at his forehead. Yeah, see them veins, baby. I like it, man. That's what we're talking about. Listen, that's like a time I was on. Uh, I was on. I, I was know, on. I should wore a hat. We call him Harry Potter. Hey, <laughs> so God, uh, oh don't you like what that do me? <laughs> so, uh, you get mad. That's the only way we have a wand on your head. The lightning strike across your forehead. I tell you. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Gotta <to> breathe. <laughs> yeah, I remember a time I was hunting on public one time, and like I said, it's posted. You know, you gotta. Have, I mean, you don't have to have it posted, but a lot of people, if you if you're next door to to public land, oh, yeah. more likely your land will be posted. And one time, I just got turned around, and a fellow walked up on me. He said, "You know this posted?" And I looked. I said, 
Man, them signs on the wrong side of the tree. <laughs> I ain't even come from that way. <laughs> I angled in. I didn't come straight in. I angled in. <laughs> we call that a J hook. Yeah, yeah, yeah J hooking into I the swung, posted. Yeah, I swung around. He was real nice though. He didn't yell too much, too long. But man, that's funny. Oh. What, do you, what do you think it is about turkey hunting that has like that that uh? comedic like poaching aspect to it like everyone jokes about like poaching turkeys like it's funny but it's not as big in like deer upland or anything like why is that well it's more it's relatable it's things that do happen whether they should or not it does happen and and you know not maybe with us uh you know but it does happen so it is relatable from a country boy aspect of a way interacting with a bird it's like it just draws you to your morals you know god knows you've been to do wrong <laughs> are you gonna pass the test you know and yeah. you know we probably couldn't have no elk down here but when it co- <laughs> you know but when it comes sure. to deer a lot of people ain't shooting way over the line they gotta drag it all the way back yeah. you know but you can't throw uh, it on your shoulder and but, walk out yeah Plus with a, yeah with a turkey you know you're more likely to know he's over there everybody's heard a turkey across the property line yeah. not everybody's sat close to the property line and seen a deer across so it's I just more it. you know yeah, Everybody but, jokes about it because they know he's over there gobbling. Yeah, if, if, like, if, if a deer gobbled, we probably have more problems with that. Yeah, I mean it'd be rough. Like I said, and I don't, I don't, I think it's just interaction. That's basically the only thing that we have to really interact with. I mean, you could duck hunt stuff like that, but you, you, you know, you call them out of the sky. It ain't like you're just going through the woods to get them. But I don't know. But it is just a draw to have something, and and I don't care if you don't trespass. If you don't, if you, I mean, you're one hundred percent by the book. You will be drawn, like you will just be drawn. Like if you were right on the line and you knew he's done gobbled fifty times, your mind said is, "I just want to go." It's still, t- I mean, it's just like you know, it's a sin to trespass. I bet, but I'm like, you're just being tested, and it just draws it in. And I think a lot of people have been caught up in it. A lot of people have done it, and we just relate because I think it's something that maybe a high percentage is probably done, whether it be one foot. Or a hundred foot, or three miles or so. I mean, I'm not saying you. <laughs> What's you point at me? <laughs> what you trying to say, dude? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, three miles. I'm just saying. Like, you, you get turned around. You know. You think you, you, you know something about Jack? We're, yeah. we're on the Big King Ranch or whatever, uh, whatever that ranch is called down in Old Texas. Three miles, dude. We were across about seventeen properties in Alabama. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm just telling you. you Pick me up on the other side or something. God, yeah, man. I've heard that a lot. <laughs> Pick me up on the other side. <laughs> Oh, no, hey, those turkeys this morning were lucky that we're all law-abiding citizens because uh, there's a couple. We we went out there to pattern our guns, so the guns were in the truck. We weren't <laughs> carrying them, but they were in the truck, and uh, we both had me and Greg both had some turkeys that uh, just kind of wanted to die this we morning. Just hung out in one spot. Hey, I'm Greg. telling you, we we yeah we had a group message going. So yeah, I, I said y'all were saying y'all wanted to go listen for turkeys. I'm like, well. Can I go like drop y'all off in places? And because I mean, we got three man days. Let's go. I'm using them. Yeah, he was using he using y'all for the information. Oh, 100 percent. And you could have been on public land checking your own spots where you get to hunt. I know. You know? Mm-hmm. I know. Mm-hmm. But there's two things that I've already taken into the consideration this 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 uh, conversation already. First of all, he looked right past me and invited Greg to go hunt. <laughs> and then second of all. I've been hanging out with y'all, and I'm not even in the group text. Hey, I was here to listen for turkeys this morning, <laughs> and you weren't here. Hey, I'll, I'll say this. Like, I've never been able to hunt Andrew's property. I, I've carried yeah. a camera around, oh, but never shot bull, him. that's bull crap. So. <laughs> Man. Well, you know. I, I couldn't go, you know, even if I was to ask you, know, I could go. I mean, y'all going to go mine. Hey, you know, wink, wink. Hey, listen. We're going to have a turkey drive. We're just going to get all of us. We'll, we'll get Leopard down yeah. here and everybody. We'll, we'll see. If you want to have fun, so Mike, Andrew's stepdad who's upstairs, he can take a guest too. Now, yeah. listen, he might like some of your content. Right. He needs somebody to kind of learn how a turkey hunt was. So, oh, you know, yeah. get a little, hey, t- a little, little two gun action, yeah, I can double him, action. Yeah. Get him internet famous or something, yeah. man. Listen, make him feel up. good. Hey, get I, his head up here like mine. Shoot, boy. I like this idea, yeah. actually. We'll, we'll do it. We'll do a, a turkey hunt in like competition or something. Yeah. We'll get we'll get you and Mike out there and me and Jacob and we'll have yeah. a. We'll take a different side of the property. We're going to be feet up, head down, walking out, son. You hear me? There you go. <laughs> Told them. <laughs> to both of them. We're going to be so deep, we're going to have hemorrhoids when we get back to the truck. <laughs> We're gonna have to have Tommy John surgery just after throwing them in the back of the truck. We'd just be pulling them out of there. Yeah. Oh, 
<laughs> oh my goodness. One of them farm birds going to come across that property line. Yeah. Shit. Oh man, there's some farm birds actually around there. Y'all were talking about that earlier on your podcast, David. <laughs> there's some farm birds that hang out, and my buddy Sam, he's kind of newer to turkey hunting. And last year, he, it was like November. He's like, dude, I just, I got, I saw a bunch of turkeys. They were gobbling and strutting and fired up. And I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah, I got a video of them. And he's like slow rolling by them on the, and they're like right off the edge of the blacktop. And they're sitting there like strutting and gobbling. I was like, man, I got bad news. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I ain't going to discriminate. They, hey, was they in a pen? <laughs> it don't even matter because that Arkansas boy done told me how to kill him if they in a pen. <laughs> you, br- you bring a frying pan? We'll do that too. I ain't scared of them. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll knock them with the pan, fry them up right there. Be out there by the pool where we were shooting at yeah, you got the Yeah, you already got the pan. Cook them up with. Sure, be ready. Yeah, buddy. I'm going to see if I, I try to find a video. Uh, I don't know. I may have deleted it, but my buddy sent me one. He was yacht yacht in some turkeys the other day. It was talking about being tame turkeys. He was delivering his UPS man. And uh, he was he was delivering. He's like, I think that y'all you call works, and uh, but I don't see it in my videos. I must have deleted it. But he's a he's a UPS guy, and he's always sending me something. And he found them, found them turkey birds gobbling and carrying on. Here we go. Everybody, so I know how to get them farm birds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with a little bit of yow yow. <laughs> Put that yow yow on them. Yeah. If they got that, yeah. 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 They ain't got, they ain't the boss. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, absolutely. That's hilarious, dude. <clears throat> Man, uh, we were, when we were out there listening this morning, Greg, you were like, I think I was the only one that was hearing a bunch of turkeys for a while. And then, and then you texted and you were like, what'd you say, like two clucks on a trumpet call and this bird would die or oh, something. Yeah. He, he hung out on this one knob all morning. He kind of went off the back side of it. You could have slid right over there and been right back where he was roosted because he came right back to it probably 15 minutes after he flew down. Just <sighs> yeah, that, too, yeah. If he gobbled too many times on a limb, he ain't got to come down. <laughs> he just... <laughs> Dude, I had one last year that, that gobbled on the limb a bunch of times and then he flew down and he was just standing there gobbling right underneath the tree he was roosted in. And I, I can almost see him. I can't quite see him. I'm like real close to him. And I hear something. And I look over and there's a group of hens limb hopping over to him. Mm. Like never even touched the ground. They were just jumping from limb to limb. And yeah, they yeah. took him. I ended up killing him. Man. Yeah. I killed him like two hours later. Late season, a lot of gobblers do that too. Yeah, I was they say. limb hop? Limb hop. Shoot him right off the limb. It's, it's legal. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get some comments about that. Yeah, I ain't scared of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Look in my eye. Make sure AI got that figured out right there. That scared y'all. Look, if he leave the limb, he's on. It's fair game. It's not my fault, you know, because my my gun shoots this way or this way. <laughs> it's I use it for duck hunt and and turkey hunt. So, but if he limb hops, that's that's him. If one leg comes up off the limb, that's like getting out of bed. You you just making the motion. So I'm just telling you, he gobbled. <laughs> And you can call a little bit if you want to. Make yourself feel like a turkey hunter. That's usually what I do with my calls. You know, you just make you feel like, a, you know, like when you go duck hunting, you got the lanyard full of calls you can't use. You just feel like, I'm a duck hunter. You put that yawk yawk call in your mouth. Shoot, you just feel like you're going to kill something. Might be yourself walking out. But, yeah, if they limb hop. So I've had them happen. I've had that twice that I know of in a buddy of mine. Just bird, just keep gobbling. And finally you're like, I'm going to have to call to him because I don't call a whole lot on a limb, but, uh, and all of a sudden they'll just, a lot of times they'll fly from tree to tree, not just the, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, and he's just boom, right there. Well, I mean, and then he's rubbernecking. Okay. He knows he's where the looking. hand, he's looking. And if you ain't got no decoy or nothing like that, he's, he's done got weary. And the one, the two that I did kill, uh, I think both, I'm pretty sure, I know one of them was a little over inch and a half and one of them was inch and a half. You know, I don't know if spurs mean age, but, to me, that it seems like he had that figured out, and uh, both of where they had it figured out. You know, to me, I mean, I wasn't gonna wait till he hit the ground. You know, he just Greg. Is, <laughs> Greg, is that one of those eight-year-old birds? Yeah, it must be. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about that yesterday. <laughs> Can't age them by the spurs. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there might be a little correlation. We'll get but, comments on that too. Oh, yeah. yeah, but I ain't trying to. Age I mean, most of, most most of these that you see that. You know, they they get posted on the internet and they say, oh, this bird was trapped four or five years ago. And it's got like, every one of them seems to have like seven, eight cent spurs. Mm-hmm. And it's like a bird they know is at least four or five because they trapped it four or five years ago. Right. I don't know. 
Is that so, like a function of their genetics? They just don't grow bigger spurs, or they like wear them off? Well, a lot of it, uh, different areas. I know, like some of the ones I've killed in Colorado. I think one of them even only had one spur because it broken off. But like, oh, just wow. depends on the terrain, you know, where it's real rocky or something like that. They're worn down. They're shorter. So interesting. Down in Florida, that sand be sharpening them when they be walking through the sand. Dude. The sand just be be off them spurs, make them sharp, make them long. Makes me cringe when people are like, "Yeah, I killed a two year old." Like. You don't know. Like, yeah. you, you might think it is he because good? he's got yeah. five eight inch spurs, but, like, have you ever aged one? Like, yeah. send it off to have an age well, to say. <laughs> that, well, some, some of those studies, uh, when they call her, or not call her, but they, like, tag a turkey and it gets killed, it might be, like, for real, like a six, seven-year-old turkey. Um, it's, like, also not only maybe their spurs are kind of short, but also, like, they might only weigh, like, 14 pounds. There oh, was, yeah, there, you were telling me about that one. Yeah, there was, uh, I think when we talked to uh, Chamberlain, Dr. Chamberlain, uh, he was talking about one, I think it was studying in South Carolina or Georgia, and a guy finally killed this bird that was just hanging out behind the check station. Nobody ever wanted to hunt behind the check station on the public. Killed it. And uh, I think it only weighed like 13 pounds or something like that. It was, I think, like confirmed like seven years old. Um, so I'm like, it ain't like these Iowa, those Iowa birds you see in the Midwest where they're eating corn and mm. milo and all this kind of stuff. They're 27, 28 pounds. Mm. You know, you see a... Turkey every now and then may break a thirty pound mark. Yeah, um, I pulled a I pulled a muscle right here one time. I shot a bird, and like I said, you can always tell when you shot a a, a real good one. Like if you shoot a couple of them that weighs sixteen pounds, and you mm-hmm. mess around and shoot one that weighs twenty four pounds. And I remember I was down in Florida one time, and I shot a toad, and I didn't realize he was a toad until after I shot him. Like I knew he was a big bird, but when I went and I threw to throw him back over the fence, it was like. Like it hit the fence and just kind of rolled over. It didn't go all the way over the fence. I was like, dude, that's a 20 pound turkey. And we got him. He's 24 pounds. But uh, I mean, I know what you're thinking. I was. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had both sides of the property, <laughs> you know. Just a little cattle fence. I like how we just breeze past it. Yeah. <laughs> We're all smirking over. When I went to go hurdle the fence, I couldn't quite get over the top. <laughs> well, I've thrown several over the fence in my life, you know. So when I when I grabbed him, it was like, you know, I just picked him up, throw him, and uh, dude, it, it pulled a muscle right here. Like, yeah, it was, and he was twenty four pounds. So you're like that meme where you're like, you see this muscle? That's yeah. <laughs> Calling out so many gobblers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I may not got these muscles from hauling gobblers, but I got these hemorrhoids from it. <laughs> <laughs> we talking them out of them bottoms. <laughs> Greg, you ever limb busted one? No. Yeah. <laughs> it it doesn't feel right the first couple of times. I, I don't even know not. if it's legal in South Carolina. I know some states it's not. So yeah, I, I don't, don't I don't I don't know what state I was in. Well. I don't remember. You were probably good then. <laughs> but it, it wasn't off like I tell people, I don't know if it's illegal or ethical, but if the bird flew to you. I mean, so it's not illegal if he was to pitch out. Say, all of a sudden, I don't, I don't see, I don't see the hen. So I'm just gonna fly off. It's not illegal to shoot him flying. So I mean, he come to you. So whatever state it may be illegal in, I wasn't in that state. I have shot him flying, <laughs> but that was yeah. this was back in in South Carolina when you could kill more than one in a day. And there were two came in. I shot one. He died. And the other one flew off, but instead of flying that way, he uh, he like there was a little bridge yeah. that went down. He flew level with me like fifteen yards, and I just plucked him out of the air. Yeah. But <laughs> again, I probably wouldn't do that now. Um, even if it was legal to kill two in a day, just extend it. You know, kill yeah. your one, go have another hunt. Another hunt, let it be. Like I said, because at the end of the day, you work this bird, and yep. then really this bird just happened to just stick around too long or you just got it and it just kind of ends where you could hunt again, mm-hmm. enjoy it again. And that bird could go breed, have a chance at breeding another day. And, yep. and at the end of the day, we, we need the breeding. So, oh, uh, as well, instead of just not what I call a flock stopper, you know, and that's, you know, when I went to Georgia, had an event to speak at in Georgia and they told me I could come hunt them and, and I didn't know at the time you know you're allowed three birds in Georgia but you could kill them all in the same day if you wanted oh, to yeah. but I didn't know the guy that was taking me on his club your limit so if he was allowed three birds in Georgia if he killed them all on his club that's fine but whatever your guest brought that went towards your limit on the club and it was opening day and I oh. shot two <laughs> that dude couldn't even kill but one more even though he, he, he didn't have his limit he couldn't kill but one more in that club and it was a fine club it was a real fine club <laughs> so, Dang, it was nice birds though. how many times have you gone back to that place you know I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> you already know the answer to that one <laughs> they didn't call me back to speak or hunt but they was excited at first, at first man it was seven long beards come through and they was hammering cause they just walked through there and uh, I can't see very good 
I just saw the first bird, you know. I didn't see the other six, seven back there. And I shot at 60 yards. Like I said, I, we were shooting at 30, sighting mm -hmm. in them red dots with the mounts on the day. And, uh, you know, we backed it up. I was like, let's try to 70, see what it do. Because I never let a bird, hardly ever let a bird get that close. I think he's already there, you know. If I think a bird's 40, he's 60. Easy. You know, that old head just turns colors on you. And it just feels like he's just 3D'd into you, you know. And I was like, oh, he's 35. <laughs> Boom, step it off, 76. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I go back to look at There's one turkey I shot at with Andrew First time I ever hunted public with him And we had I screwed up, had a gobbler I've told this story before I Had a gobbler, they pitched off the limb And one of them was coming right to me Like right to me and Andrew And Andrew's like sitting 15 yards to my left And I was so green at the time I'd hunted with my uncles and stuff I hadn't hunted in a long time for turkeys Instead of shooting the turkey He was 30 yards from me Instead of shooting the turkey I looked over at Andrew. I was like, "Turkey pointed at him. Didn't have gloves on nothing. That turkey was like, Boop, and yeah. like put that head up and like took off. <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh crap!" And he was like, "Oh, let's we'll see what happens." And they started strutting over here to our right, and the pines next to us came out of the hardwood drainage, and they kept strutting, kept strutting back and forth. And I'm like, "Man," I I told myself, "Oh, he's 45, 50 yards, or whatever." Like, you know, I'd take a shot, a shot. They just launched one, and that turkey got <clears throat> just didn't even phase him. He just took off running and flew, and I started. Running he, probably, over. he probably peppered him like you get peppered on a dove. Hunt. I, I started running over. This is being like super new, but also like I wanted to kill a turkey so bad. I started running over there. I'm like, man, it's taking me a minute to get over. I have no idea how far it is. But when we shot at 70 yards, probably about 110. <laughs> <laughs> Legitimately, <laughs> hey, it happens, man. Like I said, judging distance and you get you. Like I said, it just draws. Especially if they blow up. Yeah. Go from that red, white, blue yeah. color phase, and 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 the other day, my son, you know, we called one up for my son. It was 85 steps, and he's going. I can kill him. I can kill him. I'm going. I don't think you can kill him, you know. <laughs> and uh, if he'd had my gun, he'd have killed him. But you know. But at the same time, in the turkey aspect, we don't want to kill turkeys at yeah. seventy. You know, it's, it's just it's fun having them up close in the encounter. But also, it's one of those things, especially as a newer hunter, when you see a turkey strutting, and when you're seated on the ground, it's different from up in a tree stand or like something elevated where you're looking at an angle. Um, Sometimes it's like it could be deceptive, especially if Gobbler comes in, he's all strutting, and you get so worked up. Like we talked about this earlier in your podcast, you get so worked up in the moment that you kind of have the, like, as Andrew call it, shark eyes, and you're like, I just got to, you know, kill this turkey. And you don't maybe realize right then and there because you haven't been in that situation before many times, and you take a shot and it's way too far. Yeah. And you pepper a turkey, you wound a turkey, which nobody wants to do, um, or, or whatever. And it's like, it almost takes you having to go through situations like that or like bumping birds, like, I need to know, like, I start carrying a range fire with me, just double checking on the yeah. ground. Like, okay, where, where's 40 yards at, like, around me? Because typically, like, where we hunt now, if a turkey comes in, and also, like, after hunting with Andrew a lot more, like, setting up where, like, you can't even see the turkey until he's 40 yards. Because, mm -hmm. like, we're not hunting fields or anything yeah. like that, or, like, big hardwood flats or anything. It's all, like, rolling hills. Like, there's never a chance to really shoot one super far. That's helped out a lot, too. Instead yeah. of, like, putting yourself down in a drainage, and you can see 100 yards up, like, up a drainage, and yeah. the turkey pops out. When you're setting up, like, kind of like how Andrew kind of taught me to do, it's like it helps out so much easier because, like, if he pops up, he's in gun range. He's right there. Yeah. He's like, drop him dead, kill him. He's not flopping, you know, kind of range. But, um, but yeah, I think, think that's something that people go through early on because I remember we'd set up in some spots and, you know, you could see a bird at 130 yards in these open pines. And, and it like, just looks like and he can see you and he knows they're not him yeah, there too. You so. can't, you can't yeah. move and you can see all the way through the whole thing. So I think that's something you just kind of learn early on. Cause like we get a lot of messages. I was talking to you guys about this earlier. I think at lunch, we get a lot of messages. I don't know if it's just because it's the people that message us, but it seems like there's a fair amount of listeners that listen to some of our Turkey episodes that are new Turkey hunters. Like they're, they're they may be late, late on. So they might be in their forties, but they've only Turkey hunted once or twice ever. Mm -hmm. And they're like trying to learn some of this stuff. And I feel like that's one thing you got to learn is like judging distance, especially if you don't carry a range finder on it. Because if you sit on the ground, like I know guys that 3D target shoot, and you know, they're real good at judging distance. But if you don't do that a whole bunch, you don't really yeah. range off a bunch of stuff and test yourself. Again, a turkey comes in strutting, it, it, you could misjudge something easily about 15 yards, if not more than that. Yeah. Um, and this is one of those things I think you just got to kind of learn after some experience. And also, again, it might be worth taking a range finder with you just to kind of get an idea. And also, we talked about this earlier. Like, when I grew up turkey hunting with my uncles, we there was no such thing. as We never heard of anybody pattering a shotgun. Like, you would go buy a tur turkey choke, slap it in the gun, right. grab some turkey loads, and you just went hunt. And, like, I didn't know anything about patterning shotguns until probably – 
maybe seven years ago, something like that. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it was just like, it wasn't really a thing. But I mean, Greg, we were talking about that a little bit earlier. I mean, it took you a while before yep. even like thinking about pattern of shotgun. Yeah, five or six years. And, you know, you're just whatever Walmart had, uh, yeah. just an just a extra full or super full choke in a Remington and whatever shells they had and just hoped it worked out, I guess. And, mm-hmm. you Shooting know. like pheasant loads or something like well, that? Well, no, turkey look like Remington Nitro Turkey, which if you put that on paper now compared to some of the stuff we shoot, you'd be like, oh, I was not wasting my time, but it's it's no wonder some of those early misses, you know, it might not have been a horrible shot. It was just uh, not not a sufficient pattern. Yeah, <laughs> not a great pattern. That's why I always wanted you to be within 40. The, 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 yep. the number was That's- always 40 yards or – uh, something like that. Yeah, and some like you were saying, some of the lessons that you just have to learn. You can't just tell people. You know, there's there's a lot of a lot of birds from the first couple of years that I was hunting that you know a turkey would pop up 30, 35 yards. Look, look around for a second, and it doesn't take you many of those opportunities to realize when he does that, it's yeah. time to go ahead and kill him. You know, he, if he he's going to be gone. So. Yeah. Well, it's also like handling different situations. Well, kind of going back to the loads. I think Andrew, you're talking about shooting. You were hunting with pheasant loads first when we started turkey hunting, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I killed my first four or five birds with pheasant loads, like copper plated yeah. sixes or something like that, um, because I, I didn't have a gun that would shoot a three inch shell, so that was like the hottest thing I could get in a two and three quarter mm. for my twelve gauge. And I, I mean, it worked fine. You know, it's just a like, lower payload. Is yeah, the only yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, I killed one bird at probably like forty yards with it. Yeah. You know, and I, like looking back, I'm like, wow, I was pretty lucky. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, now you know, I got the old the Punisher, the Toothbuster, the Mule, whatever we want to call it. Old Mossberg 835, yeah. boy. Shoot, you run out of bullets, you just run up there and knock him in the head. <laughs> Dude, let me tell you. Yeah, it's got the barrel that's overboard. Because you walked up and you're like, who's shooting a 10 gauge? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could tell by looking at the choke, I was like, yeah, what so, is it? And then I remembered, I was like, oh, yeah, those 835s are overboard. So. Why do they do that, by the way? Is I it, don't know. Is it like stripping the wad? Is it, I don't know. I really don't know because, you know, with, with the TSS and all that, the the smaller bores shoot better for, you know, the payload is a, cause it's a longer shot column. So like if you put, so with TSS, you're shooting ounce and a half ounce and five eighths and a 20 gauge. If you put an ounce and five eighths and a 12 gauge, that 20 gauge is going to outshoot it most of the time. So I don't understand the tent. Maybe, maybe back in the day, the lead load shot better out of the 10 gauges. So that, that could be why. Yeah. I, I don't know. That makes sense. Yeah. It kind of makes me wonder too, because, uh, I don't, like I like I, I mean the gun's fine. It's it's like it's really not fun to shoot. It's it was way better on the lead sled. But every year I like <laughs> do not look forward to patterning that gun. I'm like golly, I gotta go. I don't want to shoot that gun unless I'm shooting a turkey with it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and but the lead sled was nice today. But we we shot it at 30 yards, sighting in the new uh, red dot that we put on it. And that 30 yard pattern is just like decapitation. Yeah. I mean it's crazy. Uh, and it's, I'm shooting a three and a half inch number nine apex, Yeah, there's a which lot is of like, pellets in it's a little much, it's a little much for a 30 yard gun for a 30 yard gun because, well, because no. my stepdad went to go buy turkey Nothing's loads too much. and he, he didn't like know what to look for. And he sent it, he, he's like, Hey, I got some turkey loads. Are these good? And I'm like, your gun doesn't take a three and a half. And I was like, just go get some other ones and I'll buy those from you. Because uh, mine does take a three and a half, and you know they're—I mean they're like eighty bucks a box, man. Yeah. That stuff's expensive. So, uh, so yeah, I just took those. So I'm just gonna hunt with the shoulder cannon, just because I got them, you mm-hmm. know. But yeah, we shot it at thirty, and uh, with like that choke configuration, like a typical turkey choke. Uh, we were talking about earlier throwing like a modified or something in there because we went and shot it at seventy yards. It throws a killing pattern at seventy, but like I'm not gonna shoot a turkey at seventy mm-hmm. just because of. Like not I, not necessarily that I have anything against it. I wouldn't necessarily want to, but just how I hunt, I'm right. I very rarely yep. have an mm. opportunity that far. So usually I'm shooting them at like thirty to forty yards, and uh, I was like, well, why don't you just throw a modified in here and maybe get a a little bit wider pattern at twenty yards, you know, to lower your chances of missing. And you were saying that it, that really doesn't make as much of a difference as you think it would. Yeah. So I mean, it it does and can, but. And we should, we maybe should have done that today. I was talking to Jacob. I was saying, you know, you might have a, say with, say with a turkey load or turkey choke, you might have an eight inch killing pattern at 20 yards. Well, if you go to modified, it might be nine or 10 inches. So it's like, is that much of a difference, mm-hmm. you know, to yeah. lose that at 40? And I was telling Jacob, we could have done like a, all right, figure out 
the uh, start start with rings, like start with an eight from the seven inch to the eight inch ring, and go around and see how many pellets are in that, and then see how many are in the eight to nine, and then compare those between the the modified and the turkey choke, and then you really get a better picture of how big of a how wide your killing pattern is because there's so many pellets in the middle of it. It's not you're not gonna yeah. sit there and count those. Yeah. You need to start counting those outer rings and just see. So it, it could make make a big diff or it could make a difference, but it's not going to be a ton of difference. Yeah, uh, especially when when people, guys talk like, "Oh, five fifty five is way too tight. I'm gonna shoot a five sixty two. It's like there's probably like a couple pellets a quarter of an inch further out on the paper at twenty yards between those two. So. See, I don't know nothing about all that. I just screwed a <laughs> choke in. My old my, my truck burned up years ago. I was in the pasture on the phone. I looked back, my truck was on fire in the pasture. <laughs> were, were you running a drip torch and doing a prescribed fire by any chance when you were doing that? I don't think I was. It might have been. I some. got that reference. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> some some people will get that. Anyways, but yeah, it uh, like I said, and I had a truck full of ammo and everything, but I had my old turkey choke in there because I it wasn't turkey season, so I took the choke out. It's in the toolbox. Anyway, it burned up, and all I knew to do was next time turkey season come around, I just went down there and got a choke. And I said, "What's well, a good one?" And they said, "Well, this is a good one." I screwed it in, and it's only Shot good. Yeah, it's only been pattern today when we when we put the mount on and everything so oh uh, why'd it, your truck catch on fire who knows <laughs> what? i don't know it just i mean it's still running i guess it got hot you know it was an older truck Wrong i guess it grass. got hot and caught yeah. the grass on fire i was in a sage field but anyway goodness and, insurance company's like you ain't try to put it out i was like i don't work for the fire department <laughs> <laughs> If I could do everything that like that, I mean, I'd be the insurance salesman, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but. I'm kind of like you though. I don't. They, they start talking about constrictions and this, and I'm just like, yeah, it goes over Andrew's head. Yeah, yeah it really does. It, I'm not as much of like a gun nerd. Yeah, just shoot it down there. Turkey falls over. We good. Yeah, with what what's available today, you know, a, a decent turkey choke and a good turkey load, you're you're way better <laughs> off than we were eight, ten, twelve years ago with. The, all the lead loads, and where you had to buy five different chokes and five different oh my loads gosh. and go I try remember, it all. I do remember trying the different choke sizes. It made a big difference. I mean, you'd find a combination that was good. Yeah. And now you can still do that. You can waste some time trying to do all that, but anything that's this reasonable is going to shoot way better. And, than and some companies, they already do the homework for you. They mm -hmm. tell you this gun. Yeah. That's how I started off when I was shooting the, the other lead loads with, uh, I forgot the name of the nitro maybe and they already had a pattern so my gun used this restriction would get the most pellets for that for their shells and then when i started shooting the tss they had already started doing some info on like this side this type of gun is good with best re results they had mm -hmm. and uh so it, it knocks down on just trying to but my kid he got a brand new gun this year for christmas and uh we just put a full choke in it and he's shooting that tss it's gonna it's going up for that 35 to 40. You know, he'll be good. Uh, so unless he gets bad, you know, vision like me where he thinks 35 is actually 70, you know, or whatever. So, And that's the reason a lot of times I've only killed turkeys at long distances is field turkeys, you think they're just closer than they are, you know, because when a, when, a, when a gobbler's out there, he's just big in the field compared to the hens and stuff like that. And uh, it just makes you think, I can make that shot. And then you think, oh, well, he, he's 45. No, he can't be past 55. You know, oh, I can kill him at 55. And then you go, and then he's actually 20 steps longer than, than that, or 15 steps longer than that. And uh, But I enjoy those close encounters. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love it. When, when, when they're spitting and drum, when you can hear that drum, it's like, oh, it's going to be on. You know, when he comes around there and he gets close enough, you can see that, that pupil. Yeah. Yeah. Give, give us a good drum real quick. You know, how they do it? I don't know. It's almost, when it gets so close, guys, it gets to that. It's like the feathers are just vibrating. Vibrating. That's exactly what it is. And uh, when they get that close and they come around a tree or pop top that little hill, and, and I really like it when they're really close and your camo doesn't match the wood you're in, and they just kind of, kick their head back and roll their eyebrow and they just kind of like they're trying to figure out what y'all is over with it's too late <laughs> you know you better get them right then because they first turn around it's kind of like you know when your significant other kind of gets on to you and kind of raise that eyebrow when you say something that's what that turkey does you just kick his head back like you're raising it a snood might stick up yeah shoot you knock that head right then it's over with i yeah. love it when they like that when they just right in there on you uh 
But like I said, and then if they gobble right there in front of you, oh. that gobble changes. It doesn't sound like oh. that big thunder down there. It's like it's like almost you like can, he lost his voice. Well, you can, and then you can hear their chest rattle yeah. when they're oh, that yeah. close. You can hear oh, that that's, dude, that that's part it. of the gobble. Like oh. you can only hear that when you're really close. So I yeah. like that. But by the way, uh, good hard life lessons here. Uh, talk to us about slings on shotguns. You had, uh, you had a good point on this earlier. Yeah, so I, I've been saying some stuff on social media. Everybody's always trying to give a tip on this and that, and that's fine. It's always good tips. And one of the tips was take your sling off your gun when you get set up on a turkey. I don't ever take mine off because everything I lay down beside a tree, I end up forgetting. And But I learned to tighten up my sling. When I sit down on a turkey or getting ready to set up to call turkeys or just chill for a while, I tighten up that sling to where it's in line with the gun there's no really much slack in it and the reason i learned that the hard way was i had a bird coming straight in to me and he he just kind of circled to my left around and this bird was dead he's going behind every tree that you could pull your gun up to get ready to shoot and i was sitting next up on a, a cedar tree and that's there was a cedar limb root or something that was up right there and my sling was hung in it i never knew it and i could not get that sling off that off it it was like it was like the limb went out and then had a j-hook on the end of it so it had me caught and that turkey just kept walking and he was dead 16 times over and it just always reminded me if you set up on a turkey don't let your sling be slack you know like i said i'm not a guy to take it off but that's only because i leave stuff but if you want to that's on you but i definitely would have it cinched up and ready uh but I always used to crawl up on it. Like, you know, if that bird hung up, I'd say, well, heck, I can make it five more yards to that next tree, you know. And then from the time I'm crawling, he's here and leaves. He's thinking, oh, she's scratching, you know. And then you get there and he hangs up. He's not moving. And you take the binoculars. So you can look behind them trees, from behind the tree with your binoculars. Just put your binoculars up and then turn your head around sideways around the tree. And you can look down through there. And that bird may be 80 yards. You just can't pinpoint him with your bare eye yet. And then if he's still down there, well, heck, you think, well, I can make it five more yards. Well, now you done made it 10 yards closer. He's still here and scratching. And uh, so I'd always have that sling tightened up because I'm moving. I don't want nothing to uh, catch in my knee while I'm crawling or nothing like that. And then, like I said, you can slip up there. And eventually he's going to be close enough. You keep slipping up there. You know, if he's not going to come to your collar, if he does. Oh, uh, you can bust his head, you know. I'm I'll, I'm, well, I'll go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I like to hold mine, um, like just pull it under the forehead. I don't like actually cinch it down, but yeah. I hold it tight because mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm just not the person that's going to take it off every time. I'm just yeah. not going to do it. I'm not going to do it either. Um, but yeah, you got to do something with it. You can't have it just dangling. Yeah. Uh, Greg, up in South Carolina, which is where you're from, are you in like hill country or flatter stuff? So I'm right at the foothills of the mountains. So okay. um, I'm almost at North Carolina state line and most of my hunting has been kind of foothills area and a little bit in the mountains. I've never hunted anywhere flat in South Carolina. You know, people think, Oh, you're from South Carolina. Yeah. It's flat, but it looks kind of like here for the most part. Like when we were at the club today, yeah. um, it's rolling Hills like that. It's, it's just like that. So, um, but we do have some not, not big mountains, but steeper mountains just right like five miles from my house. Mm -hmm. I hunted South Carolina last year. I had a day to hunt, and we didn't kill anything. But the property that I hunted, or next to the property I hunted, was that some Murdoch fella. There was a big thing going oh. on. And uh, they, I mean, they, they were telling me all about this. like, yeah. And he's like, he owns a bunch of land around here, and I didn't know. And then later on, it was like, he's pretty big, big on the news there yeah. for a while. And uh, But yeah, he, but he had some turkeys over there. Like I said, we just couldn't really go over there. Uh, it had signs up. It said, like, posted prosecutors will be and there was a bunch of words down there I, I i usually can't read after the prosecutor will be after <laughs> will be prosecuted so you know uh one of the reasons i was asking is because i was curious about y'all's experience just turkey hunting flatland uh because i don't know if i've ever really chased turkeys on flatland like straight up you know like this is kind of some of the hills around here can be a little a little bit steep but i've hunted up in like more rolling gentle stuff but never just flat yeah like swamp nothing like hunted that. florida um and um, I killed a bird the first for opening day last year. But it's, you know, it's a little bit different. And, of course, you can't use the terrain to your advantage. You just kind of. Yeah, I'd be harder. lost. Yeah. I'd be lost as a ball in high weeds, yeah. man. I ain't trying to hunt none of this guy. I ain't trying to hunt nothing but <laughs> flat land. 
How funny. Oh, only Kansas hill I want is one in my belly. <laughs> Kansas flatland too, but then they have the you know the creek bottoms. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know the the actual land is pretty flat, but then it you drops got, down twenty or thirty feet into those bottoms. And if it's dry, boy, you can run down them creeks and get ahead of them turkeys because you know they just be following them hens and things be strutting. They just walk right into your gun barrel. Oh, you're like talking about like a dry creek bed, mm-hmm. like big cut banks. It's like five feet deep. You just yeah, y'all, you need just enough to to. I mean, you ain't got to hunch down just a little bit. And them turkeys, you know, they'll be following them hands, be strutting along the edges right there. And, you know, they're just going to go. You know they're going to go another 600 yards. That's where the bigger trees are, dude. Yeah. Man, you just dude, cut you them just off. Cut them off. Right? Just watch them strut all the way. You hadn't really done anything other than the effort of just <laughs> getting there. But to be able to sit there and get way ahead of them, sit down. And then watch those birds just do what they do naturally, mm-hmm. strut all the way in, gobble and everything, and then have the opportunity. Uh, oh, that to, sounds awesome. It, it is. Real quick, I, w- I want to uh, get a little bit more into y'all's background. I want to start with you, Greg. Okay. How did you get into turkey hunting? Did you have a mentor? Did you have a parent that hunted or something like that? Or what um, was your intro? So growing up with, with my dad, we only deer hunted. We didn't really have anywhere to turkey hunt. Um, there was some turkeys around, but none of, none of the places we hunted um, – you know, he wasn't into turkey hunting, so I never started until I was in college um, with my with my best friend at the time. Um, still my best friend now, but we we went one morning. I killed a turkey my first hunt, and then um, well, it was a jank, so it wasn't anything crazy. But it was a good morning, and then that was I think my second turkey was on my own. So I I had a lot of learning that I did on my own, but we still hunt together now. Um, so yeah, most of mine was was learned on my own i guess but you know kind of following what he did and it, when we hunt together now it's like when i when one of us is thinking something the other one's already doing it so it's since, since i learned most of it from from him and learned how to how to learn as well so what was what some was. what was some of the bigger hurdles you had to overcome early on that you can remember like biggest mistakes or like oh. things you look back now that, that that was stupid yeah biggest mistakes were and it was something we you touched on earlier um when they're in range it's time to time to shoot one pops out over a hill at 30 or 35 yards just realizing that he's gonna look and not see a hen and be gone because i don't you know if people can do what they want i don't hunt like fields or decoys or anything like that i like to be in the woods fool them with a call and you know they look around and they're gone. So that that's the biggest thing to me. And then I've missed a lot of birds a little too close. And uh, you know, 30, 35 yards is a good enough range for me. That's close enough for me. Yeah. Well, David, what about you? How did you get into turkey hunting? Was it something like your dad did, or anyone like that, uncle wise, or how how did you get into it? My younger brother went and sat up under a shooting house and sat down. and was calling, and, and he shot a double bearded turkey. And uh, eight and a nine inch beard, and we—I didn't even know what a turkey was. Like I knew what a turkey was, like when you saw it in a book, but I knew nothing about. Never, dad. My dad had never turkey hunted, never knew nothing about it. And my brother went, and since we were competitive, I was like, "Well, I can do that." And uh, me and him went one day, and we killed one the first day we went. And uh, I just kind of got hooked. Like I said, my daddy didn't, but when I got my dad into it later on in life far as just going like the first time he went he killed a bird you know and the second time he went he killed a bird and he was like ain't nothing to this you know but i remember telling him i said daddy you know because you kind of look up to your dad you're trying you know he's taught you a lot now you kind of want to teach him something like daddy i don't really care but anything that got a beard if you want to kill it kill it you know i wouldn't you know i didn't care i just want my dad to be able to enjoy what i had learned because he had never hunted and i sitting there and i was calling Here they come. And this hen come out, loud mouth hen come out around the corner. And we were, me and Daddy was separated probably eight feet or so. And I, t- I had told him, I said, just anything with a beard, just kill it. Dude, this bearded hen come out. <laughs> 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 and it wasn't legal bigger than yeah, yeah. it. It was short, you know. Anyway, and I just saw, I'm sitting to his left about eight feet, and he was set up because I told him, I said, if she's acting like that, she's going to bring somebody in with and I just remember my daddy's gun barrel just swinging all the way over to the bird, to the hen, and she's like 20 steps. And I'm going, mm-mm. <laughs> mm-mm. You know, I got my mouth shut. Mm-mm. And I heard click. I said, mm-mm. 
<laughs> I had to holler. He was finna bust that hen. He said, you said anything with a beard? I was like, well, I meant anything that might have been a gobbler with a beard, you know, yeah. just. And uh, he said, well, you said anything with a beard? I said, I know. And then we, we ended up leaving that spot and going. And he killed a stud. It's like inch and a quarter spurs on him. And uh, it was crazy because I remember us walking around this road. And. It was, I mean, it was like a road we could hunt in the mm-hmm. place, and we're coming around, and this this turkey, this gobbler, I had never seen a gobbler breed a hen, so I really didn't know what that looked like. And when we come around the corner, and we're walking at a fast pace because we really ain't hunting at this point, we're just kind of chilling, and we're just walking around. We come around the corner, and this 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 gobbler is bowed up in the road, got his wings out, you know, he's all just whatever, and all of a sudden, I guess we spooked him. And she come out from under him. And when she come out from under him, I realized what was going on. But before that fact of him coming out, we were walking around a corner and we both stopped. Like we knew we were seeing something and we looked at each other and go, is that a monkey? <laughs> 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 That's how much we knew about turkey hunt. <laughs> I mean, it was so funny because we both looked at each other and I swear to you, it looked just like a monkey just, <laughs> just standing around. <laughs> Because it was in the shade, like in the shade part of the, yeah. you know what I mean? It was sunny and it was in the shade part. And dude, it was so funny because it was like, we both said it at the same time. <laughs> is that a monkey? <laughs> and, then that, and that's when the hen popped out. And she's like, and, uh, and I was like, well, shoot him. <laughs> you know, he, just, he just tried to figure out like, why did she leave me? And, uh, and he shot it. And that's how he killed his first turkey. But but regardless, I didn't care. But that was just so funny. Like we, we literally thought that guy... In the state of Mississippi, on some back road, you know, country club, where he had, you know, or hunting club, going through there, and it's like we thought we saw a monkey. <laughs> oh, thanks. So let me ask: well, uh, going back to like some of those early years when, like, you just really were trying to get into turkey hunting after having some success. What were looking back? What were like some of those big things, like mistakes that you made, kind of early on? That like now you look back, like that was dumb. Like just as like you know, how you called, how you set up, like, was there anything you did back then that like, man, you know, that's something that, uh, you know, like, you know, I think you said you started hunting, were you like in your twenties? I was 19, 19 when I first started. So it took me about three, I'd say three seasons for sure to hone in killing turkeys. Mm-hmm. Uh, main number one thing I see a lot of people is just, just cause it's gobbling a limb, they're calling, you know, I'm not going to lie. My son sent me a video the other day, of that bird hammering on a limb. And then he goes, I'm like, Son, you ca- I can't even see the skyline. Like, what, what are you calling for? You know, he's sending me texts and texts, and I'm like, you know, I see a lot of people do that, and 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 not knowing, and a lot of people, younger folks or, or new, don't know that a turkey may gobble fifty times on a limb, and when he flies down, he may never say another word, and they're just sitting there hammering, calling, 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 and thinking that the yes, that's what we want. We want that turkey. We'd love for him to gobble all the way in, but in reality, he's just. He's done all his gobbling. He's called up, hopefully, what he had come down there, and he's learned whether through life in general, through coyotes, high predators, hunters, uh, that when you get on the ground, you just hush. Because, like I said, even though we look at it as we know the birds are there, mm-hmm. he's calling in, they also kind of know that the calling and the gobbling also will call in predators. I mean, they, they yep. had to fight this every day. And uh, so a lot of mistakes like that, you know, like I said, I don't hardly call in the woods anymore. You know, I like to go and listen to the whole world, like for them to do what they do. If I hear a hen yep, I will yep. But most of the time, how many times do you actually go to the wood and they're just hollering? Yeah. They're not walking around. You're, you're, you're calling trying to strike them out, strike them up to interact, and that's wonderful. But in reality, you could just sit out there and may not hear a hen yep all day, but the turkeys are there. Mm-hmm. They're, 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 they're doing more of that with their little flock they're more scratching so many birds have died with just nothing but scratching mm-hmm. and uh but I, i'll tell you the biggest mistake <laughs> that cost me i was in a bottom one day and we had four long well it was three long beards and i had roosted them had a great place we call it the hog lot the guy two two guys on this hog lot and this hogs wasn't even in a pen it was just a lot like 100 acres that they just free roam and he would go and they'd feed them every day, whether it be sweet potatoes or turnip greens or uh, chops or corn or whatever. And that's where all the turkeys loved to come, was to the hog lot. That's why there were so many there. Right? They was always eating grain feed is what they was doing. Well, uh, 
I went out there, I roosted some birds one day on that piece of property and got up there the next morning. Thought I was going to kill them right off the fly down. You know, they didn't. Well, they run across the pasture. It was a cattle pasture, but it was that hard, too many cows on a pasture. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even grass. It was just beat down hard. And they run over, and it was a bird gobbling over in the pines, and I was on the creek. I said, they're all right here. I said, when they pitch down, I got to kill one of them. Well, they pitched down and they run hard over in those pines. But when they did, I had done figured out kind of the point of uh, killing turkeys. Mm -hmm. So when they took off in them pines, I, they wouldn't need me sitting here no more. I struck out across there and I got right up against a tree line and went, nope, nope. And they all hammered. Four long beards that got together, but I didn't know it at the time. All, all I had in my mind was the three. Them turkeys come running right back out into that pasture. Within, I mean, within seconds of me just running across there 80 yards it was, a, it was a yeah maybe a little bit further maybe a little bit further we saw 70 today so i'm gonna say 90 to 100 yeah. i run across that pasture and just got right up on the line yow, yow, and they just run right back out well i was going for the last bird why you know i'll tell you why because you always heard the stories the big one to be at the end you got the lookers all this is going through my mind through the years and i'm like it's gonna be the last bird the last bird gonna come so when that third bird come out the first two is already spotted because I'm in the open, mm -hmm. but they're looking. And I was like, man, let this third bird walk out. Well, when he did, he walked out and I was like, and I just kind of swung to my right a little bit. And when I swung to my right, the fourth bird come running out there like he was, he wanted a hen. Boom. Two birds went flopping. I see in the state of Mississippi, can't kill but one a day. Well, the bird, the bird that got hit that I wasn't aiming at, it had his head just run over on the ground, and it was took off running. And it's just running with his head just laid over. So I just said, well, I mean, in my mind, I'm thinking, I ain't no need to let no wounded bird. This all happened just split-second stuff. Boom, boom. He rolled over. Innocently, I'm just thinking I just saved a bird from being wounded and going off and die. So I didn't have nothing to hide. So I took both birds back to the truck, put them in the truck, and I drive. You had to go down to the dead end of this, the dead end of this gravel road. You had to turn around. Well, I get down there, and it was two black men coming out with camouflage. And uh, he's like, hey, man, you get a turkey? I said, yeah, man. I said, I got two of them. He's like, two of them? I said, yeah. I said, I told him the story, just what happened. He said, oh, they looked at the birds in the back of the truck, and uh, I went on. Well, I get almost to my house, and they blocked me off in the road, the game wards. And it was one of the black men was a game ward. And I was like, and this, you got to think this is 25 years ago. And, and and I'll be honest with you, I didn't, you know, one of them had owned the land next to us, but I was like, and then to get caught, I was like, <laughs> I was like, but what saved me was they, uh, I told the story as is and wasn't trying to hide nothing. So it wasn't like the game wards come rolling up on me and I just come up with a story. So they didn't. They took one bird and it cost me a little money. And, uh, but anyway, and then that guy that caught me that was a game warden, he ended up quitting like a month later from, from being a game warden. He went and worked on a railroad or something like that. And I was like, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but honestly, you know, that's the probably biggest mistake was uh, just bring one bird out at a time. But, you know, if I'd have known, but no, I was, but I was honestly, and that's what, you know, that was a mistake that ended up costing me. But, uh, but I thought it was fun. And then later on, they started hunting that property. And I, so one day they were hunting that property and, and I was kind of, I was still kind of ill will about just getting the ticket and being honest. It's kind of like when my daddy used to say, you know, if you just tell me the truth, the punishment won't be as bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the, you still gonna get punished. But I was like, you know, it cost me, it didn't cost me as much, but if I'd have lied, I probably would have got off, but I would have felt morally wrong about the lying part. But if I also would just would have been like, if I went up there and be like, man, they, they turned to come out, I just went to blasting. <laughs> probably would have went to jail. He probably would just went on like, you know, game warden, mm -hmm. you know, but he let his buddies come in and get me. And, uh, but that's probably the biggest mistake that I did accidentally. You know, I mean, I make a lot of mistakes in life. But <clears throat> I just, I just remember, I was like, I, I never would have thought you was the game warden. I didn't even know y'all would be turkey hunting. And, and then we ended up, I, like I said, me and his dad ended up being really good friends. Like he worked, I, when I worked for the city there, he, his dad did electrical work. So I had to deal with him like 
on a weekly basis. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and, I'd be like, and I'd be like, he'd be like, well, you see my son lately? I said, man, I'm going to tell you I don't ever want to see your son again. <laughs> <laughs> he well, might be a good one, but I don't want to see well, him again. That's, and that's a good point of bringing it up because one thing that I've learned, because I had that happen with deer. That happened to me two seasons ago. And I self-reported, shot one buck. And I've told the story before in the yeah. podcast. Shot one buck. He drops down. I call Andrew and hold on yards. We're two miles back on public. I hang up and I, all of a sudden I see the back legs of the deer up and his front head's down. I'm like, crap, he's trying to get back up. So I rack another round, shoot him again. It runs towards me, stops behind a tree, like where I get to see his brisket, shoot it, drops. When I drop, same frame as the buck I just shot, six point, just smaller. I'm like, yeah. and I look back over that buck still laying there. Yeah. And I called Andrew and everything. I self reported. I, I got a warning from him. The game weren't thanking me for calling because he's like, a lot of people in that case, they just leave the other deer, not ever mention anything or get both deer out, whatever. And that's one thing I've realized. I talked to more and more game warts about it. I had a, like a federal game warden call me. He's like, dude, I'm glad you talked about it to let yeah. people know that like if that happens, if you self-report and it's an honest mistake, mm-hmm. most game warts understand, especially if you self-report something like that. Um, and, I mean, it happens. You know, I've heard it happen with guys turkey hunting and everything else uh, for whatever reason. You know, tur- you know, you got bird goblins coming up over the ridge, you shoot. You know, kill that turkey and you walk over. There's no turkey laying dead or whatever. Yeah. You know, it happens, but it's like one of those things. You know, if you self-report, even if you get a ticket or get fined, at least you did the right thing in in the in the eye of you know between you and God, but also like with the law and everything, they understand that hey, it was an honest mistake with everything taken care of and and so on. But That's you right. know, I, I got a warning for that, and it was an honest mistake, and I, I felt it went from like being the greatest moment ever. And I went back in there, killed this freaking awesome buck, and then next thing I know, ended up two deer dead which you're, you're not allowed to have in alabama right well the same thing like i said i could have went home and done the turkeys the thing here's the thing you would have told somebody mm-hmm. and then you would have told somebody and then the world gets out and the next thing you know a game one shows up at your house you were being honest but they're going to look at it like well you were just telling your buddies the mm-hmm. story but you wouldn't be honest enough to, to self-report yeah. or something like that and like i said i got caught with two turkeys if i'd have knowingly just say i shot this turkey and then i shot this turkey well that's me doing wrong i wouldn't have come out with both turkeys i'd have drove one home because we didn't have to report turkeys back Mm -hmm. it's 25 years ago i took one home breasted him cleaned him went back the hour later and got the other bird and never would have told anybody you know but uh like i said i just told those guys the story because the turnaround point was you couldn't turn around there was cars down there you couldn't get turned around they didn't walk up on the truck well now i know why that he walked up on the truck he game one he was just he was being nosy anyway you know and then when he when i had to tell him i mean they're in the back of the truck you know it was just i didn't say nosy it's their way yeah yeah they're so used to just looking and checking and, and then i didn't Blasting up the world down there with three shells, you know they're like. <laughs> like I know you weren't target practicing, bro. It would have been more believable probably to him if I'd have just shot one time and yeah. both of them would have died like that. He'd have been like, "Well, but when you shoot three, you're yeah. like, he shot up the world." You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he down there blasting, but I told him that this is what happened. I'm not hiding it. Mm-hmm. And when I when I brought up like the color of being black, it was just like never would have thought that was a game warden and you never would have thought that they were just you know like i wasn't trying to hide anything you mm-hmm. know and uh that helped me a lot so when they when they blocked the road off down there when they when he called his buddies and they blocked the road off i'm coming down the road i was just like they were like hey he called us and i was like yeah game warden <laughs> <laughs> anyway well i'll tell you something else also i think it's important to kind of mention in this episode is because it's just happened guy just got shot in mississippi yep. um about paying attention about exactly what you're shooting at. We talked a little bit about that on your podcast, but just like, in all honesty, like if you're targeting whether you're on public land or private land, even if you're on private land, you don't know, could have a guy slipped across the private line that you don't know about, and you need to make sure exactly what you're shooting at at all times. Exactly. Because every year somebody gets shot, and it's it's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, and every now and then someone gets killed you know, getting shot with the shotgun, uh, especially with the effectiveness of TSS. You shoot somebody up close to TSS, they probably aren't going to make it. It's not, it's not very good. And like I said, and, and when you're hunting, you're zoned in on what you're hunting. Mm-hmm. You think everything that moves is going to be a turkey. Mm-hmm. It could be a squirrel. It could be a deer. But you think everything. And like I said, you could be, it could be somebody crawling up on you or crawling to coming to your calling. And, uh, you call and you might not be shooting them, but they may see you move just to raise your hand up to go, mm-hmm. you know, and next thing you know, you know, they, they black, if your hands up here and they saw the movement, just shoot. Like I said, we were talking about my buddy. He shot a Coke can off a burnt stump. Turkey was gobbling and fanned out, but 
He got zoned in, and somebody done put a dang Coke can on a burnt stump in the woods where a turkey got him. So, you know, but he had a good pattern. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, this is something to mention. I mean, you, you really do have to pay attention on what you're shooting, the whole nine yards. Because the thing is, turkey's got two feet, we've got two feet, okay? You may not think a turkey sounds like a person walking through the woods, but last year when I killed my first – the, the first bird I shot last year on, on public um, – when it's, they started walking in, at first I was like, is that a perk? Because they came in quiet. They didn't gobble when they came in. I got back on the roost, yeah. the, the roost ridge like an hour and a half after they flew down. Did one call to because all of a sudden I hear walking. I'm like, there ain't no way there's a person back here. But just in case, I, I mean, had a finger, had the safety off, I had a finger along the side of the, the stock of the gun. And the second I saw that fan come up and I saw that head pop up, I saw the other one. I'm like, all right, we're good. Yeah. But it's just like, you never know. You know, you might, like, I, I, I've told this in the podcast, I had a guy crawl up on me. Like eight, 10 years ago, and I told this on your podcast, but uh, had a guy cr- crawl up on me, and I was just hitting calling. I wasn't gobbling, wasn't doing anything, and he was crawling, and I didn't, I could hear this subtle sound, but I was like, what is that? And finally, I had a gut feeling where I just felt like this is a bad situation, mm. and I caught out of the corner of my eye what looked like a black boot come over a log through some thick cover. And fi- I was something with my little brother, he was at the time like 11 years old, I was seven, eight, 17, 18, and um, I whistled. And I was like, Thomas, don't move. Like, I think there's a dude crawling. And I, I whistled, and it stopped. I whistled again, and then he whistles. And I was like, hey. And he said, hey. And he stood up, and he's – y'all can't <laughs> – behind the camera can't see, but he wasn't 25 yeah. yards from me when he stood up. Yeah. And uh, it's one of those things, like, you know, if we happen to move, and he caught movement for whatever. He might have been just trying to shoot a hen. I have yeah. no idea. It's illegal in Alabama to do so. But after talking to the guy, dude didn't seem mentally stable just yeah. after talking to the guy and the whole nine yards. And it's like, you never know who you're going to run into, so you just need to take the utmost precaution, especially during turkey season, because you are on the ground. You do have yep. a firearm. Yeah, it's you know a turkey load, but still, you could kill somebody 25 yards, Man. 30 yards with a TSS load, take it right to the chest of the head. Yeah. If you can get them right here, it takes a little I mean, it'll, I'm just saying, if you ever had a problem to where... You need. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> right here, it's all. This is thin and weak. I don't. I don't know. I think after uh, some penetration tests, we were talking about guys using some TSS loads, like some what yeah. two shot and, yeah, and T for shot yeah. for hogs and deer, and knock yeah. them dead oh, at sixty yeah, yards. Oh yeah, talk about that. That's crazy. Oh yeah. Uh, well, yeah. What's, what's your buddy? Yeah, there's some guys like in Florida, um, and they 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 shoot like T's, the TSS T's for deer, run it like running them with dogs. And which is legal in Florida, um, and hundred yards, fold them up, they're running full speed. So yeah, and then you had a buddy's son kill a deer with yeah, a, with a four ten, um, at like sixty yards with number twos. Um, I mean, there's just yeah, there's just there you, you know a, a four ten buckshot load with lead probably has three pellets in it. Yeah, um, this has like forty something. So really, smoking them. Again, you don't want to get hit with TSS. No, you don't want to get hit with TSS. Especially, I mean, even number eights, that, yeah, would yeah. be a bad day. But it's just, it's just one of the things I wanted to mention. As uh, as we're getting to turkey season, by the time this episode comes out, you know, Alabama will be open. Georgia is about to be open. Uh, you know, Tennessee, a lot of these states in the south, he's about to be open or already open. And it's like, you know, just be as careful as possible while you're out there, guys, because you don't want to be the person to, you know, shoot a person, potentially kill somebody, or get shot as well. So And stay calm. I tell a lot of people, like, stay calm. It, it's it's aggravating, you know, and I joke about stuff. It's That's turkey hunting about, you know, illegal activity and stuff like that. I'm not that person as much anymore. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I just – but I don't hide the fact that we all have a past in something. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're if you're a, you know, I've said it before. If you're a drunken alcoholic or addicted to drugs or you adultery on your family and whatnot, those are all sins. But when we find a better path, which I do through Jesus, we all become better people. Mm-hmm. So even though my sins and my past are they are behind me, whether the outdoor industry or the outdoor people, you know, see that, but. uh one thing is, I don't know if you ever had any trouble on public land, but it is aggravating. It's real aggravating as a person when you're trying to hunt a turkey, you're on a turkey, and somebody comes in on you, you know, and that's going to happen. But neither one of us have full claim. It's just it's just aggravating. Because in reality, if that bird's down there gobbling and I never heard you call, how am I supposed to know you there mm-hmm. in reality? But it's aggravating. But as people... We don't need to let our aggravation go towards one another to where we think that one of the other is going to whoop somebody. Yeah. Because I, I I've run into it before, and I and I let the fella know, you got a gun, and I got a gun. Ain't nobody whooping nobody 
if it gets to that point. I just want it understood. I'm 44 years old. I get winded easily. You know, <laughs> so, don't even know how I made it this far down in here. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was just too tired to walk back the other way, so I just kept going one way. But you know, we just have to remember, like you said, hunting that public land, or even in your hunting clubs, yeah. people. You know, it can get that way too. You know, uh, with hunting clubs. But we just have to be remember, don't let the hunting aspect of it make you lose your cool to where you possibly may not be able to hunt again, lose your family, lose your job, lose your truck house over being sued or, you know, and it's hard because we take hunting so passionate, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, on that hunting, on that public, like I said, you see it all the time on forums. My truck was parked here and he mm -hmm. still come in here. I'm like, but it's still 15,000 acres of truck. I know it can be aggravating, but it's still 15,000 acres here. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I mean, I don't believe in watching a guy walk this way and that bird goblin falling right behind. If you're not going to hunt with him, yeah. you know, be, you know, be respectful. But, uh, main thing is like you said, the guy that you met may not all have been here where you felt like you don't know what you might run into thinking that you're just going to handle this guy. Oh yeah. You know, and you don't know what he's going through. He might be hunting because it's, he might be out there trying to enjoy the hunting aspect of it because he's trying to get away what he's really got fighting a battle. Mm -hmm. And if a guy walks up and says, you're hunting, you know, and you're just going at him, you don't know what that might be his final straw. Because mm -hmm. so many times we say we go hunt to relieve stress and pressure and get away from the world. And then if we're the one guy that walks up and acts crazy what he's been trying to get away from, who knows if that ain't the last time that that dude wants to deal with you or himself. Yeah. You know. Well, it's also one of those things uh, for people to realize there's no animal worth. Like, I'm not going to get an argument with anybody about really anything like that. Unless they were doing something illegal, but it's still like, dude, I'll just, in that yeah. case, I'll just call law and let them deal with it. Yeah, it's just, it's one of those things that, like, you, you what's crazy, like, we talk about like people getting like arguments, fights. Ain't nobody like a duck hunter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there's, too many, there's too many videos from the boys out that. that <laughs> let me, let me tell you, there, there ain't nothing like some boys over in Arkansas hunting some public land, some flooded timber, getting fist fights over duck holes. Oh, okay, man. I don't, I don't want to kill a turkey or deer, or I don't care anything, nothing about a duck to get no fist fight for anybody. I just go get another spot. Like what? It, you know, it is what it is. It, Especially you get there late, don't be fist fighting over. Like, oh, you claimed a spot, or you know, like, this is my spot. I go hunt, and you know, it's public land. You know, my son was that way this year on the refuge down there. He got into duck hunting this year. I'm not going to public land and wade through 20 holes to get to a spot to shoot some wood ducks. <laughs> I can go out there on my fishing pond behind the house and sit out there and shoot them two wood ducks out there. I ain't going down there. But my son, they would go down there. And, of course, I have a game warden buddy. And uh, and don't get this confused, folks. Just because I have game warden buddies don't mean they won't give me a ticket. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I already got one warning this year. So, <laughs> But... Same way, those kids, my kid was getting there at 6 o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday afternoon to hunt, to, to go in at 4 o'clock. So you basically got spots lined up, and it was 50 cars. My game one buddy sent me a video. It was 50 trucks lined up on that road. And I was like, ain't no way. It's like 20 holes in there, right? And you basically, who can, go, who can get to the hole, which hole's the first and all that. And, they, and it was a bunch of kids because it's refuge. I can't no grown man, 44 years old, wade through what they was wading through. The game warden told me. He said, I check them at the truck. He said, I waited the whole three, and it was all I could do. To, and these kids are waiting to, to hole number 20. Like, it's got 20 holes in there. And they're marked. And he's like, just check them at the truck. They shoot all day long. He said, but I catch them with lead. I catch them over the limit. He said, I bust their tail up here. But – go out there you know but the, going back to mm -hmm. you getting fights and arguing over this hole and that hole and they'd be real close my son was sending me uh snapchats of the people would be 50 yards from you Golly. and they just they they, they hollering and cussing one another you know because they're getting ready you ain't shooting up a wood duck it's like a dove hunt they're just coming through there like it's right here and uh i just couldn't do it like i couldn't be a grown man and then some what I call a kid, anything that's probably not even in their 30s, hollered, cuss me for shooting at a wood duck, and I'm in my hole and I don't wait it down here. You know, or you get to a spot like my son would get there at you know, six o'clock in the afternoon, he the first truck. That means he basically, if he can run to the hole, he gonna be the, you know, you get to pick your hole. 
They out there fighting, talking about who's going, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, sir, we ain't finna do this. You finna have to call your daddy, you know. <laughs> I'm just telling you, I can't do it. But they, I seen on the internet them guys fighting over duck holes. I'm like, every one of y'all got a gun here. Like, I mean, I don't, I, I don't want nobody shooting nobody, and I understand fist fighting, but talking about over a duck? Mm-mm, mm-mm. It's like that in Alabama, man. I, there's some places, everyone knows about them. There's some waterfowl places in Alabama that are public. And you go up there and it's the exact same thing. The, the afternoon before, there's people out there sleeping in their trucks. I'm like, guys, we're in Alabama. Yeah. And it, there's like four ducks in this state. Like four ducks. And you can't kill but four ducks. So. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So you, even if you got up here, it's six of you in your little group. And then you can't kill with four ducks piece, but it ain't four ducks gonna fly in there total. And two of them gonna be hooded magansers, and the other gonna yeah, be, right. you know what I mean? <laughs> Dog won't even eat them. <laughs> I said, man, y'all better stop. And I used to duck hunt a lot, like a lot. Like I had five private holes. It was wonderful. I was spoiled. Didn't have to pay nothing. Just hey. And then they sold out. You know, over the uh-huh. years, five or six, seven, eight years, I lost them all. And I was like, I went to a public land over in the Delta on a draw hunt. Went out there and sat on a catfish pond. I said, man, I'll never duck hunt again. I might shoot one illegal, but I ain't ever going to hunt one. You know, shoot one off the pond out there behind the house. But talking about all these folks fighting over that. It makes me just want to go now just to uh, YouTube it. There you know, you let their ignorance make me money. You know, but but they they also need to re- I understand kids. The kids going to fight. But I've seen video where these kids try to get in grown men's faces. Mm-hmm. And I'm like. When you get to a certain age, that's over with. mentally, that's over with. You know, you can be twenty five years old and think you're gonna jump on a forty four year old. You wrong. You might catch him, but you better not catch him before he get to his truck or, or <laughs> get or get his shotgun out of his sleeve. You know, but and I think that's the mentality of a lot of older folks that we're done with that. You know, I'd rather not hunt knowing that I might hurt somebody if I go and just try to have a good time. Mm-hmm. Where my son's like, It don't bother me. I'm like, Yeah, but if I was there and that 18 year old kid cussed me out. Wade in the water. <laughs> and it ain't for duck hunting. <laughs> Somebody's gonna get baptized him. <laughs> I'm just telling you, and I just I just know me. I just know me. That's why I got a sweet, wonderful wife. She keeps me cool, calm, collected. <laughs> there's even there's even people that'll try to, you know, not just public land, but if they're close to to private. I've had people try to run me off of public. You know, I'm like toting a turkey out with, and it was one that probably the first one I killed when my wife was with me. We were way back in this spot one day, and we made it about halfway out, and we see these two guys, and they're like, "You're not supposed to be here." And I'm like, "Yeah, I am." The lines up like where I was yeah. walking out, I was still like a hundred yards over, and I'd killed the turkey like a mile in from that. And they're like, "Oh, okay," because they know that every now and then they probably get somebody that Don't. you know maybe doesn't know where the line is mm-hmm. or whatever, yeah. and. uh yeah, so it it could have been a bad situation. I'd have, I'd have probably never shoot at me during deer season this year, for real. Multiple I had somebody times. shoot at me. Yeah, I'm talking like multiple times with AR, just a pa 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 pa, dude. Yeah, I had somebody shoot at me in Georgia about 12 years ago. Yeah, I, I was. I'm like, I I'm about to catch a case. Like shoot at you, like like Shh. saw you and took a crack at no. you, or shot in your general. Because Jacob got. He wasn't trying to shoot. He was Jake. shooting in the oh, tree. Yeah, he was yeah. shooting trees and crap. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. That's that's the same situation. Yeah. It was deer hunting, and I killed one, and was trying to leave there and with it. And yeah, mm. let me explain this to you, boys. It's always best in court to have one story. <laughs> Hey, when, we, when you were telling that story, you know, we got some buddies. I'm means, like, if they're not there to tell their side of the story, you got a better chance. Because they're going to lie to begin with, and it's a, and you got to remember. I don't know if you're politicians, but elected judges are voted in by a bunch of idiots too. So you don't always get a smart judge. But if you ain't got but one story, you got to go by yours. Now whether you lie, or tell the truth, <laughs> but the other guy going to be lying, right? If you know he's in the wrong, he's going in there to lie. And you don't know what kind of idiot of a judge or a jury of your peers. And I ain't got no friends around where I live. They know me, but I don't hang out with nobody. So ain't nobody going to be lying for me. I'm just telling you, if it ever comes down to it, you go to court with one story, 
And they got to figure out the rest. And exercise your right to plead the fifth. Dude, then, Jacobs was like actually legit, uh, like sketchy because I don't know what this guy was doing, but he had a big, he has a big uh, pasture that borders some public and it's flat, it's swampland. And uh, he was riding down the tree line, just cranking them off yeah. in the woods. I should have been filming the whole thing. I, I was, that was the last time in my mind though. Because the weird thing oh, about it, like this place weird. is hunted, this place is hunted big time. And yeah. it was a, it was a rifle hunt. And on our rifle hunts in Alabama, like on our WMAs, you can you can't just hunt all gun season. You can only hunt on designated weekends. So when it's a gun weekend, there's a lot of people there. And this is like it's a community hole. It's, mm-hmm. a, it's a spot a lot of people hunt. And this guy's coming through, just cranking rounds into the woods uh, hour before dark. Just and I'm just like, what ooh. are you even doing? And we had guys in camp like, if you would have done that, at me. Yeah. There yeah, we had one this story. one guy in camp. I'm not going to say. Hey, his yeah, name. I'm not going to say his name. But, but he, I'm he was like. You were telling the story, and he's like real quiet. And he's just kind of sitting in the background, and everyone's like, "Oh my gosh!" And then you just hear him in the background. And he's like, "I'd have dropped his ass." <laughs> 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 we, we were shooting at the same deer. As I like to hit in the middle of the field. Next thing you know, he went down. I don't know, but it's a sketchy situation because when you put yourself in it, you got to know what to do. If if you in a court of law, mm-hmm. in a court of law. Oh, we ain't giving you no legal advice here. Huh? Listen, no, no, no. We're not, we I'm have a saying, podcast for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, in the court of law, if you'd have shot back, they're going to look at the evidence and say, well, you were hidden. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, You know sure. what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. sure. You know, it's, it's, it's easy to say what you do. That's yeah. why I always say, if, but if we like at the truck and a man got a gun, you know, it could get very sketchy, but... Uh, yeah, I haven't had that happen, but... Yeah. I've I've heard of people I, look legit have that happen like people confront people like I got confronted I got confronted with a gun with not with a gun but with, with a uh, uh, I don't know if you call it a rich man you know but he he owned some land and his son was down there hunting and his son always come on my side of the land and I never said anything because I was killing turkeys anyway you know he just wasn't that good and uh, one morning his son got on a bird I got on a bird and I killed the bird. Well, his son called his daddy, and I, it took me a while to get out of that bottom. It's a long ways, and I got up here to my truck, and here he come flying around there, just barreling, you know, dust. And uh, he stopped. He said, you kill a bird this morning? I said, I did. <laughs> he said, was you on my property? I said, I don't think so. He said, well, my son says you shot him pretty close. I said, I got a pretty big gun. And he said, let me see that turkey. I said, well, it's fine. Get out and look at him. So we got out of the truck. He grabbed my tailgate and just slung my tailgate down. He picked the bird up and flopped him around like he looked at him. I said, yeah, he's just a two-year-old. I said, he a dime a dozen if you want him. You know, but he was going to be bad. But looking back, that man wasn't big enough. I wasn't big enough either, but he thought he was going to handle me because he thought I was trespassing. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people with a mindset, and it wasn't because of his money. He just thought he just, he's probably just used to handling people. And I'm sitting there thinking, all I need to do is that dude grab me like he did that turkey. And my mindset is, we gonna, at the time, I'm young, so we're going to fight, right? But a lot of people don't know that you don't know what somebody might do. Just because you have the mindset to handle somebody don't mean they don't have the mindset. You know, the guy that you're talking about, his mindset, he might have sent some rounds back to that dude and break that up, you know. Then again, that guy that was doing all the shooting to begin with, he's going to tell everybody he didn't do nothing. And then y'all were shooting at him. You know, so got to have that mindset ready, you know, or no, I'm going, I'm leaving the situation. I'm sorry for messing up your turkey hunt, your deer hunt. I'm just going back out of here because, you know, and that's the way I am because I know me, you know, if I'm calling up a turkey and I walk up on a guy, he's probably going to be mad. I understand, you know, but we, we're going to act right. We're oh, gonna, yeah. We're going to act right. Yeah, you got to be careful with it, man. There was there was a, a deer lease here near us that was kind of well-known, like the guys had had it for a really long time, and they ended up getting in a dispute with some guys who were it was, they were parking on a property line or something, and they got in a big argument one day, and a gun got pulled, and the law got involved. They all got in trouble, and their lease got pulled. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, really, guys? Yeah. Like, really? Wasn't worth it. Come no, on. No, it's not. You yeah. just woke up on the wrong side of the bed that yeah. morning. Yeah, too much stress, too much stuff's going on with the family or work, whatever, and you just let that sucker just bite you in the butt being done. <clears throat> that being said, most of the people, most of the inter- <laughs> almost all the interactions I have are always really good. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Like, even on public, 
um, especially on public. That's how I met Jacob, actually. Yeah. And it, it's like overwhelmingly good. But oh, and and we talk about that a lot. But you know, I guess it is good to talk about kind of the other side. Well, of we it were too. just you talking about careful. the mistakes, and we're talking about things that have happened. And, and when you do that, you jump into that rabbit hole of, hey, well, this happened, this happened. Then it sounds like it is a bunch of negative. But it's not. You just, you know, it's yeah. it's more good than it is bad. It's just aggravating when you are, you know, you get people all the time. Just like when you share a pen, somebody, and next thing you know, that's what my kids do. It. Not gonna lie to you. I said, why would somebody share a pen where a tr- where they roosted a bird? He's like, we just my buddy. So guess what? My son's taking his coach and his son this weekend. I said, see, son, that guy gave you a pen, and now you going. He said, well, he can't come no more. Now your coach and his son gonna go yeah. when you ain't. I said unless y'all kill the turkey, and that's how people start piling in. Even though none of you, you know, necessarily had the spot. I was like, that's how. So it's a good lesson for like your son too. But for anyone out there, if someone sends you a pin, that stays between you and that person that sent you the pin because they're they're maybe trying to help you out. But like, because I've had that come up before with like other people I've talked to where like they share a pin with a buddy, thinking they was just their buddy gonna go in there, and the next thing you know, their buddy takes a buddy, and then that buddy's buddy starts taking a friend and then it's like you know six or seven guys hunt the same area when the original guy was just trying to help his buddy out trying to get on a bird or get on a deer or something like that oh yeah and it, it happens it, 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 it kind of <coughs> comes that kind to me that kind of comes out or comes back to like some of that publicly and ethics and stuff it's like you don't you might not realize how much time went into someone like trying to find a spot or find a bird or find a deer or whatever um and so on but uh it, it's to me that kind of comes with experience and also just kind of understanding like the how things kind of work and, you know, you know, if someone puts something in you in good faith, you know, you kind of do the same thing with them and so on. Cause like I've had buddies like our buddy Shane Parker sent me to some spots. Andrew doesn't even know about it. I ain't even shared it with Andrew where he put me on some spots. I should have killed a big buck and just screwed the pooch on it. Uh, yeah. on how I should have hunted. And you know, it's kind of between me and old Shane at that point. But, um, but yeah, dude, I mean, it's the, the thing is one thing about turkey hunting is it's a fun experience going out there. You're playing cat and mouse with an animal that's vocal. It's like complete opposite of the deer. You yep. know, deer is all about the, you know, it's stealth and like you never really know the deer is there until you maybe hear a stick break or you see them or whatever. Where the turkey, like it's the whole cat and mouse game of a, a vocal animal, kind of similar. Well, Greg, you know, Greg's a big elk killer. I don't know if you know this. I did not know. Yeah, you know, he's, 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 he's killed at least one big old yeah. sucker. Killed one big one and some cows and some. Yeah. Yeah. But I shot a few cows myself. But. <laughs> Get some red eyes out of that. <laughs> it didn't have, no, didn't have no ivory teeth in the front, though. No. <laughs> but, but, but a lot of people talk about, you know, the vocalization with turkey hunting is similar to maybe what you could experience potentially elk hunting. Um, so there's not very many animals you get that kind of relationship. And that's the one thing I see of that's really special about turkey hunting. So if you're out there as a listener or viewer and you're interested in turkey hunting, you're kind of new at it, it's worth kind of giving a shot and just seeing and understanding that you might not have the luck of, say, you know, Greg and – yeah, David here, where you know the first time y'all go out might not probably shoot one. Don't go out with that kind of you know understanding because it doesn't typically happen. No, it because there's plenty of times during the season this year. I'm sure I'll go eight, nine, ten days in a row without yeah killing something. But it is what it is. Absolutely. Well, as a point of uh, getting here to almost wrapping up, David, talk to us a little bit about this podcast you got going on. If someone wants to hear you talk about stories, you being naked on a plane or you know killing all these big deer and all this kind of stuff. Uh, uh, I did get naked on a plane. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You ain't heard that episode. I cried. I about wrecked my truck crying on that episode. Uh, yeah. You go. I got the Yacht Yacht Show podcast. I mean, basically everything I got. If you want to listen or see anything I got, you can about Google Yacht Yacht. You know, and it's gonna come up and uh whatnot so yeah we got the y'all y'all podcast which y'all helped me with and kind of keep me straight and learning it and uh just bought a house or in the process of buying a house that comes with a man cave there you so go. maybe we can have it set up kind of like this right here and then yeah. you know make it feel you know that old trailer hood bar we've been sitting at you know it's a little bit different vibe you know i, I really like this vibe with the lights and the cameras and good company so we're gonna try to get there uh, and whatnot. So I really appreciate the help and y'all pushing me yeah. uh, with that podcast because we, we try to have it once a week, which is every Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jacob Andrews usually texts him about like Sunday night, like, hey, where's that episode at? <laughs> I'm like, man, I don't forgot. <laughs> you, have like you have to get like them and do about three a week. So I know it, eventually, they're well, on like 500 I, I, and episode 570. Five, this will be yep. 568, yep. I believe. Yeah, yeah, that's right. 568. Yeah, we're only three months in on mine. Or so, four months, five months, but uh, 
people's asking for twice a week, and I'm like, dude, it's all I can with what I do just to get the one a week. So, but now you understand because we have people talk about like, oh man, I want to start a podcast. You don't realize what it takes to do one. You're like, oh, so you're just talking until you start, and you're like, it's a lot more than I kind of expected. Like, I, I, everybody is like, oh, I can talk, man. That's fine. It's not just that, but it's like the back end of what it takes for the podcast, especially the back end on the podcast. But I tell you. Everybody that I've talked to, it's like with YouTube, they want they want all the advice on the YouTube. I'm like, dude, do you about 50 episodes of YouTube and then just put them out there, do the content. I said, then come talk to me. And it's the same way with the podcast. You can sit there and say, I'm going to say this, say this. But once you get about 10 or 12, 15 episodes in, you're really like, okay, now what's interesting in my life? Because you done told a lot that's happened. Are going on in your life, so they they've learned about you. Now you got to go out there, and you got to you got to find people that want to be on your podcast. You got to find things you want to talk about. Sometimes during the week, me and my wife didn't do nothing that's interesting to the world, but you want to be talking about something. And uh, being in the, I guess you call this the outdoor wilderness part of it, you know. It, you know, we're not sitting up here watching the news doing politics on yeah, you know yeah. a podcast. So we don't have hot takes every week. That's right. Yeah. So it, it takes a lot. To me, it takes a lot, but I'm also learning it, you mm-hmm. know. But uh, y'all, y'all be putting them out, and I just be like getting a text at the end of the week, like, "Hey, Cole, we need a, we need at least half a day to, to edit your stuff." <laughs> I'm like, it'll be easy. It's just gonna be me, <laughs> dude. Hey, there's something to be said about that. Me and Jacob were joking not long ago. We're like, man, we ought to just start a political show, like, because you never, you don't have to go do anything, yeah, and you never run out of stuff to talk about. You pull up the laptop right here, yeah, and you start reading it. News, yep. and you just start talking about it. Top five people, takes, yeah. You can do it, but man, it is so negative nowadays. You about can't oh, have any yeah. any positive politics or news in general. So, only news I want is uh, good news. By the way, if they if they want to see some news on some trapping, ch- check out the YouTube channel. What you got going on over there? Yeah, go to the Yacht Yacht YouTube channel. Uh, we knock a lot of heads when it comes to hogs. You know, as far as YouTube channel, we're number one right now on hog trapping. For you know, there's a lot of people out there that do it, you know, but mm-hmm. Lord bless me to be number one right now. And uh, like I said, we'll teach you, learn you, and educate you, and you know, probably confuse you a lot too. <laughs> but we have a good time with it. So, yeah, y'all, y'all, YouTube and uh, the y'all, y'all show podcast, man, that's what we want. Go check it out. All right, sweet. And then, Greg. We we haven't really talked about much about Meadow Creek mounts, but we did shot a whole video today. So again, by the time this episode comes up, people can actually go watch. That's it. Yeah. Like what? First off, why someone would want to go shoot a red dot? Uh, but give me. I want to kind of get your take on uh, kind of you briefly talking. Why would someone want to go to a red dot? Look at the mount and everything, and kind of you know just the, the process of it. Yeah. So just a lot easier to aim. You know, um, pretty much whether you have just a single bead on your gun or you have the, the rear sight and the front sight that you're trying to line up, the red dot eliminates that uh, with the reflex style. doesn't matter where that dot is in the window. If you're, hit, you're leaning around the tree to shoot and it's kind of over in the corner of the window, once you've got it sighted in, that's where it's going to hit. So it just takes a lot of the, uh, I won't say guesswork because, uh, you know, there's not really guesswork in aiming, but it just it helps with your accuracy when – like 10, 15 years ago when everyone was shooting lead that was splattering all over the whole target, you didn't realize maybe that you were off by six or eight inches because it was just kind of all on there. But now if you're shooting a TSS load, a turkey choke, it's kind of a perfect circle. You can fine tune that. And I've, I've not had very many guns that have hit uh, point of aim, point of impact, you know, with whether it's just a single bead or the mid rib bead. So the red dot takes care of that. Um, it's good for people like, like David here is getting bad eyes. My eyes Very aren't bad. great either, so um, you shoot with both eyes open. You can see around it, and uh, yeah, it just just helps you get on target a lot easier. It's easy to put on, easy to side in. Obviously, like you said, people see in the video how simple it was. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I, I, we're trying to wrap up here, but I gotta ask because I meant to ask this earlier. What got you to start Meadow Creek? Uh, how, how did it come about? Yeah, so I was an engineer already, um, and I just had. Well, I wanted to put a red dot on my 870. Of course, 870s don't come drilled and tapped, so I started looking at ways to do it. And I'm just thinking, I'm like, they have a saddle mount that you pop mm-hmm. and then that sits up real high. And then I looked, and I saw a lot of people asking online as well, how would you mount a red dot on my gun? Like, people ask that every single day on some of the Facebook groups. Right. So I looked, and I was like, 
I don't really see any reason why you can't put it on the rib. You know, it also gets it when it's on the barrel. That's where you're going to, your, your shot is always going to hit straight out from the barrel, you know, in a, in a shotgun, when that barrel goes into the receiver, there can be some slop. You might take the barrel off and go back. So if it's mounted on the receiver, there could be some difference between where your barrels lined up, you know, you lock it in, it's close enough for a shotgun. But, um, but once I, once I tried one on there, used it for a couple of years, used it out away from my face where you can see around it. Uh, I knew that I had a, had a winner there and it's, it's become very popular. Heck yeah. So. Yeah, I've had it mounted on a Picatinny rail on the back of the shotgun, yeah. and uh, and today we took that off and we mounted mine out on the rib, and it does make a really big difference actually having it further out. Yeah, because you made a comment, you aimed through my gun, and you were like, "Whoa!" Like, <laughs> you're like, like you said something. I can't remember what you said, but oh, like, I said, oh yeah, you. I didn't even know you heard what we said. What, what? I said, oh, he must have a long neck because it was like, because oh, <laughs> he had on a Picatinny rail and then you got a Picatinny mount and then you got sitting way up here. I was like, Andrew's got a really long neck if he can use this thing. That's what it was. I didn't know you were listening. His name was Giraffe. I don't know if you can yeah. tell. Yeah, he got that, it. that one's name. No, but no, being out there on the rib, man, it, uh, that actually made, I, I really liked it, uh, being able to shoot that a couple times. So yep. people think it's backwards until they try, like they've always been told to put it back here, but that just really doesn't make sense. You know, a lot of the red dots were made for either ARs or pistols, but like I've never seen anybody shoot a pistol with a red dot right in front of their face. Yeah, so, right. you know, you get it out there, see around it, use both eyes. Well, in the bore sight too, that was pretty slick. Yeah, that's that was, something I didn't even think about, but you're like, yeah, I'll just yank the barrel off, look down the barrel, bore yep. sight. And then boom, you're, I mean, you're on paper. We were within like six inches on the first shot. Yeah. We didn't even try Jacobs with, uh, lead loads. We just started out with the bore sight and we yeah. were pretty dang close. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you, you just shot the modified and it looked like it was, we, I think the bore sight had we, it. we didn't touch we it. We never touched it. We so. didn't touch it with the second shotgun. First shotgun, I had my turkey jokes in. Second shotgun, I was like, man, I just got it modified. Let's just see how it patterns. Bore sight it, put a, uh, TSS load in it, and at 30 yards, it killed 30. Past 30 yards, probably don't want to shoot it, but at 30 yards, it's pretty good. Yep. Um, but yeah, and it's super easy. And I was going to say, you know, we'll have the video out so y'all can kind of go and check some of this stuff out um, on the video for the siding process. Because again, the way you did it was a lot easier than the way I've done it in the past. Because I've had it rubbed out in the past. A lot less ammo. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I've, like, even like if you're shooting lead loads, I, I remember last year when I sided mine in, I probably went through 10 lead loads just to get it where I want it before stepping back with a turkey load, fine tuning yeah. it with a couple turkey load shells. So it made it a lot quicker, but also you can go over to meadowcreekmounts.com, use the promo code Southern. We got David on here. David just got a promo code, but we said on his podcast, <laughs> our, our, our promo is Southern. Um, and you can uh, save you a little bit of discount. And also if you want to buy a red dot, he's got vortex, the new defender ST series, but if you want to buy any other, uh, optic, again, you can get a discount as well on those optics as well. So, uh, it's a pretty sweet setup. Uh, I really enjoy it. And again, at the kind of, I think going into my third season now with it, it's, uh, it's been huge for me. It gives me a lot more confidence shooting because again, I'm bad. We talked about this earlier, but I'm bad about using a bead and peeking over the barrel, find, looking where that bird's at. And the next thing I know, I'm peeking over the barrel and I'm like pulling the trigger as I'm pulling my head back down, shooting over the top of a turkey and just scalping them. Yeah. Good so. thing about another thing, like you said, we're wrapping up, but the red dot gets it to where if you've got a bead and all that, you're blocking half the turkey. You know, you're blocking everything except from his neck up. So with the red dot, you can see all around it. You can see if he moves that head back right before you shoot. So yeah, yeah. put it right halfway down his neck, right on the waddles, right on your head, his head, and shoot. Well, especially with TSS because it is shooting so tight. Like that bird gets at 15 yards. You, be, I mean, you're throwing a probably a six yeah. inch pattern maybe eight inch, 10 inch pattern. Like you've got to be right on. Cause if you're off to the side, left to right, six inches, you're going to miss the bird more than likely, uh, yep. especially when they're up close. So red dot helps that out a ton. Uh, also I'll say this real quick. I, I mentioned this day. We talked about this earlier, uh, not on the podcast, but just talking about, it. I use bond for dove hunting. I used one and I only bore sighted it and I went dove hunting. Dude, it's legit. Like, I'm just going to say right now, you look goofy. People make fun. Oh, of you, yeah. Especially if you have it on over and under. Uh, like my Weatherby and people are like, what the heck are you doing? I'm like, dude, it's fun. It's come to eat. We come to eat. eat. Yeah, we, 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 we're, we're, hey, we're, we're getting our 15 doves and we're going back to the yeah. house. Especially that dove that's coming this way yes. that you need to lead anyway and you can't see it with yeah. the bead. With that red dot, you can still see yeah. see the dove. Yeah, for the, I, all, for the I, audio I, listeners, if the, if the dove's flying right at you, which is pretty, it's a really hard shot typically with a bead because you, you can't see the bird. you got to cover it up. Yeah. You've got to cover it with a barrel and everything, especially leading the bird, but with a red dot, 
it, you can see exactly how far out in front of the bird you are and, you know, pull the trigger and knock them down. So, yeah, it's fun, dude. I'm not going to lie. Makes me want to go dove hunt. Well, I got a bunch of people that, that duck hunt, goose hunt. You know, I think I don't personally do any waterfowl hunting, but um, they, they use it for everything. Yeah, I think field birds would be awesome. I, I'd be a little nervous taking it. Like flooded timber oh, and stuff yeah. like that. If I was yep. on a boat, it's cool. But if I was yeah. staying in water, no. But like if I was on a, some field yeah. hunting geese, I'm gonna put it on my. I got that black Benelli, that uh, beagle. The beagle. Yeah, I got that black beagle. Oh yeah, we didn't mention that earlier. You super black, black beagle. Yeah, that super <laughs> black beagle for my turkey gun. But I also got another Benelli that I use for just everything else. So, are we um, putting a dot on it? I don't know. Are we? I don't know if you want one. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah it don't matter to me, but yeah. yeah, we were talking about it, you know, as far as dove hunting, and of course, see, I can crow hunt year round on, on private property, and I think that'd be a good little YouTube to yeah. crow hunt, but uh, I'm a terrible shot, so that's oh, when you, help. So when you were talking about that, and you was like, man, it's almost like cheating, I'm like, well, I love to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> Just Some of my kind of equipment right there. My wife said, you better calm down with that. <laughs> <laughs> she, yeah, I, you be careful with yeah, that. Yeah, I told that time, I was like, ask me, you a trapper? I said, man, I trap anything with fur feelings. My wife said, you better leave them feeding alone. <laughs> <laughs> like you right, baby. I be forgetting. I be forgetting. I be forgetting. <laughs> like, you ain't forget that. So wake up dead. You keep on. <laughs> oh man, awesome. Well, guys, I appreciate y'all joining us uh, for the podcast. Appreciate both y'all as well coming down. I mean, yep. uh, Greg, you came all the way down from South Carolina, so it's been a, a good time. Also, we we learned this is a little tidbit at the end of the podcast. You made it this long, you're gonna get this tidbit. We found out Greg is a world class. <laughs> Mouse trapper. Oh yeah, so <laughs> his eyes all big. Wonder what was the yeah, I was like, "What are you? What are we talking about well, here? Where are we going?" With this? Dude, he caught he caught him a mouse in the, in the van. He's got a van, just like kind of a his mobile turkey rig. Yeah, well, I picked up the mouse at the Dixie Deer Classic. Um, like I told you, I had some Reese's cups in there. That obviously there was not a mouse in the van. Went to the Dixie Deer Classic at the fairgrounds. He obviously got in the van because I could hear him chewing on the way home. <laughs> And last night, after me and Jacob ate dinner and all that, <laughs> quit I smacking a, back here. I put a mouse trap in the van, and it was how long was it before like I seen? Five, dude, five I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't even get back to my place, and I already had a photo on my phone yeah. of you trapping it. You so said he's you, been, laid, you uh, laid down. Yes, I and, laid down. Well, before my head hit the pillow, probably. So I took this mouse from North Carolina back home to South Carolina. It sat there. There was no food in the van for him to eat. Like two weeks later, I went hunted in Florida. First day, we open up the tub of food, and like he eating. Off a corner, off like five pieces of bread. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. He didn't eat through um, the tub and got to the bread. <laughs> well, he didn't eat through the tub. And, and my buddy that was with me in Florida was like, oh, he's in that tub somewhere. Like, because we don't know yeah. how he got out. So I started, no, I started going through everything. I was like, he's not in the tub. So yeah. somehow he got back out of the Rubbermaid tub. Transport wildlife got across state night. lines over here. That's a violation of the Lacey Act, <laughs> sir. Yeah. <laughs> Well, <laughs> got him. <laughs> it is what it is, I guess. We'll talk to the the Raleigh uh, fairgrounds. Somebody put him in there. Oh, it's terrible. But yeah, you called my son. That was just funny. I get that photo. I'm like, ain't no way, man. Five had minutes. Him, five minutes. It had him had him snap. So I would have called him earlier, but I really thought he was gone because there was yeah. nothing in there for him to have. And I was like, he ain't gonna stay in here more than a day or two without yeah. food and water. And he either got out and got back in, or you picked up another one. Yeah, how was the bread? My, my buddy that was with me, he he couldn't believe I was going to throw it out. I was going to toss it. He said, "No, give me that," and he cut the corner off of it. No, no, I'm hey, good. And I was like, "Look, when we go home, whatever bread's left in there, I'm throwing away anyway." Yeah. So yeah. Right. Yeah, I had a loaf from Aldi, just that grain bread, and he yeah. ate the corner off of it. So. Had a good time. Well, awesome. Well, sweet. Well, boys, appreciate y'all joining us on the podcast. Again, y'all check out Meadow Creek Mounts on, well, just MeadowCreekMounts.com. And then check out old David Ellis, y'all, y'all, on his podcast, and then also on YouTube as well. And just, again, appreciate everybody watching the podcast. Appreciate everybody listening to the episode. And we'll catch y'all back here on, for Thursday's episode from the Southern Outdoorsman podcast. And remember, guys, y'all stay Southern. Give me a gobble. Ow!